Hello, Bill. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, literally inventing and building the future. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. Uh, you are inventing and, be and building the future. Well, you guys are in the right industries at the right time. We were just going through your website. The website is nightscope.com. And I have a few questions I want to go through with you, Bill. Uh -oh. Can I start? <laughs> go for it. Perfect. As long as, I, as long as I can legally answer it, most likely I will. So, Shoot. Fantastic. I appreciate that. So my first question is, what inspired you to start a company focused on autonomous security technology? Uh, I always say there's a personal answer and there's a professional one. As I mentioned, I'm ex-Detroit executive. I really believe self-driving autonomous technology is going to turn the world upside down. I'm just in a intellectual uh, disagreement uh, with the path to commercialize the technology. Um, so it might be helpful for your listeners. You know, engineers are really good at solving problems with constrained boundary conditions, meaning um, I've got a box that can kind of iterate and engineer a great solution within these constraints. And, you know, I, I think the numbers are about a couple hundred companies and maybe a couple hundred billion dollars have burned so far to get self-driving autonomous vehicles out on the road. And it's a very hard assignment. Uh, meaning let's go put a 4,000 pound unmanned vehicle on a public road with no legal framework, no insurance framework, no safety framework, random time of day, random climate, random everything. And Mr. and Mrs. Engineer, you must make sure it works 100% of the time and never fails. Like that's kind of really tough engineering assignment to accept. That's the, in my opinion, the aerospace equivalent of, hey, uh, I really don't want to go to the moon. Mars seems too easy. I'm going to go to Pluto first. And I just don't think that's the appropriate way to go putting the Tesla team aside for a moment because I, I think they took a different path than everyone else, which I'm very excited about. Um, so I, I think for us, it's, you know, crawl, walk, run. Hey, can we just get this thing to work at three miles an hour? You know, level five, fully autonomous, not remote control. And then once we've done that, then we can go work on the 15 miles an hour. And that's kind of what we've done. Everybody told us it would never work. Uh, it's hardware, it's software, it's too complicated. And now we've operated more than 3 million hours out in the field, in the real world, with paying clients, multiple winters, multiple summers, in the heat, in the rain, with people, cats, dogs, vehicles, trucks, and everything else. And you know we've learned a thing or two. And so now that we've got that kind of starting to scale up, uh, we're working on the next generation of uh, technology that we're we're actually really excited about. When I look at your company, I think of two companies. I think of Tesla and NVIDIA. Because when I think of AI, I think of NVIDIA. And when I think of autonomous vehicles, I think of Tesla. And I think you're in the right place because they're two of the biggest, largest market cap companies in the world. They've been two of the most successful companies in the world. And they're they're led by two visionaries so i love what you're doing and you're, ma you're making a lot of sense to me because i love technology and i feel like nightscope is right with their thumb on the pulse so i think you're doing so, some great so work let me, let me finish uh, answering the uh, other question and tie him back to what you were just saying yes uh, so the the second reason to start the company was a, a lot of folks have heard this you know i was born in new york city someone hit my town on 9 11 and i'm still really pissed off about it and so i dedicated the rest of my life to better securing the country. Uh, so you don't want to bet against a team that's showing up every day that's on a mission to get something done. And that's why we're willing to do the irrational, illogical, sometimes dumb things to force what we want to happen to happen. And, you know, thinking about NVIDIA, um, you know, we use, you know, uh, their GPUs. Um, and we're, we're grateful for having that long term uh, relationship with, you know, been using for the longest of time. But what we're doing is focused on fixing a problem, which is crime. Um, but usually it can create a lot of value in fixing the most difficult things that haven't been able to be fixed prior, right? Um, we're, we're on our coming up on our 47th president, and no one's actually fixed this issue. We give our troops unbelievable capabilities, the 2 million plus troops out there. There's someone in charge, the Secretary of Defense, uh, $800 billion budget. There's General Dynamics, Lockheed Martin, North of Grumman building every um, impossible level of capability to give a soldier at their fingertips, unprecedented, almost super, 
I don't know, superhuman capabilities. We, we as a country don't do that on our own soil. So the two and a half million officers and guards get up every morning willing to take a bullet for you and your family with, frankly, the technological equivalent of a number two pencil and a notepad. And they're, the Department of Justice, most people don't know this, Department of Justice and the Department of Homeland Security have no federal jurisdiction, over 19,000 law enforcement agencies and 8,000 private security firms. There's not one single person in charge. There's not one single budget. There's not a massive innovation strategy. And there's new widgets coming out the other side to give these officers and guards capabilities uh, to build what uh, to, to actually do their jobs much, much more effectively. And that's the gap that we're working on fixing. If we can put one million machines in network that can see, feel, hear, smell, speak and autonomously cooperate and give the guards and officers unprecedented capabilities for them to do their jobs more effectively. Like the notion of actually making the US the safest country in the world, as crazy as that might sound today, is actually possible. And so now what we need to do is just execute. And what we're doing is technologically very difficult and operationally even more so. So we're combining some of the stuff that you talked about, about Tesla and NVIDIA. You've got uh, autonomy, AI, robotics, and electric vehicle technology. All four of those by themselves are really hard. Uh, so we thought to make it a little bit more difficult to try to solve the problem is combine all four into a all-inclusive uh, subscription offering that our clients now enjoy uh, and are operating across the country. And that's why long-term I'm extremely bullish on Nightscope. You know, it's been a very long build just to get to this point, you know, 11 years to build all this technology try it out, bump our head, make changes, bump our head, make changes, bump our head and, you know, start scaling up. But, you know, I haven't sold a single share in 11 years. Uh, I didn't sell any shares in the public listing. I recently bought more shares. Um, and I know long term, there's an opportunity for us to build a 30 or $40 billion company that looks oddly like a defense contractor but instead is focused on the Department of Justice, Homeland Security, the law enforcement agencies, and the security companies that I spoke of earlier. Uh, very, very impressed with everything you're doing. Now, my next question is, what specific environments or industries your robots serve best? Uh, I'm gonna give you two different answers. Uh, first, easy answer is wherever you see an officer or guard patrolling is an opportunity for night scope. So a lot of our clients are corporate campuses, commercial real estate, um, HOAs, uh, apartment complexes, manufacturing facilities, warehouses, um, a lot of hospitals, uh, a lot of hospitals, a lot of healthcare, and a lot of casinos. And one curious thing that I have in mind there is all of them have one very similar characteristic, which is they're running 24 seven. And our subscription model does really well. Uh, because instead of having four uh, guards there uh, that you need to cover, you know, uh, seven days a week, 24, you can have, literally have one robot and have it remotely monitored either by us or, or by our client. Um, the other answer is one of the pitfalls I've, we've seen with a lot of incoming new clients. They want to put the shiny object, the new robot, the fancy thing, um, in the most prestigious, prominent, biggest spotlight, Times Square, like lights on area. And that's usually where humans are a lot better. Um, and it takes some new clients an adjustment in thinking where, where you really want to put this technology, especially the autonomous robots, is the most boring, ridiculously dumb. You can remotely monitor. You don't need a human there. And then you redeploy those humans to um, an area where they can be a lot more effective. Uh, so instead of thinking of this like, oh, the robots are coming, they're going to kill everyone and take everyone's job. It's like, how can we give the monotonous, boring, computationally heavy, uh, sometimes dangerous work to the robot and have a human in the loop monitoring that uh, remotely and then redeploy those resources uh, elsewhere. And that's a much more effective thing. You know, just think about, I don't know, patrolling a nine story parking structure going up and down all day long. Do you really want a human doing that and being able to read and count all the license plates and all the people they've seen and done the, do the thermal uh, anomaly 
uh, and make sure there's no fires going on and, and, and the like? Or would you rather have a human interacting with people maybe towards the front door or keeping an eye on things uh, via the robot? So that, think of this more as a, as a tool, as a supplement, as opposed to uh, a little literal replacement. What are some of the future milestones that investors can look forward to over the next three, six, nine, 12 months for Nightscope? Um, I, I would love to, uh, we're very focused on, we're a technology company based out here in Silicon Valley. Uh, there's two things that I'm uh, really excited about that I have the, the team working on. Um, one is uh, maybe more inside baseball. Uh, it's called the Intelligence Control Module or ICM. If you look at our portfolio products, uh, we have a lot of SKUs. Um, so there's different form factors, uh, different firmware, different software, different electrical, different everything. Um, and that's fine for now, but to scale that up into, you know, hundreds and thousands and, and millions of units, you kind of need to commonize things. So we're working on this ICM that we spoke of earlier in the year, uh, where all things AI, all things uh, video, all things audio, all things telecommunications, and all things lighting control. Those are the five items that the stationary machines and the mobile autonomous machines share. Uh, we're working on one uh, low cost uh, module, high quality that will carry um, all of it across the entire portfolio. So this would be you know, a good trick that our friends at Volkswagen and at Ford and, and Tesla and others uh, do is just when you want to get to volume, uh, you need to try to commonize things as much as possible to uh, get some economies of scale, uh, reduce the engineering workload, uh, be cyber security compliant on one on one product and one platform only. Uh, so we're hoping to release the at least the initial version of that uh, next year. So we start harmonizing um the the platform and getting all our all our costs down uh the second one that uh, is a little uh, actually harder is the uh upcoming nightscope k7 this is a four-wheeled version if you go to nightscope.com just go to the drop down and you can see it's under development uh we're actively working on it we've got the alpha prototype uh working uh rather well um it's hopefully gonna before the year's out uh, leave our premises and go get tested at an existing client. So this is an alpha prototype. It's not a pretty version of it, uh, but just the underpinnings uh, and the chassis uh, are um, uh, ready to, to go do some uh, real world stuff. Uh, hopefully next year, if everything goes well, uh, we should start uh, unveiling some beta prototypes, which would be uh, visually representative. We've got clients lining up uh, where we can test them. Uh, and cross fingers, if everything uh, goes well on that, we'll start taking pre-orders uh, for that K7. And uh, looking for it uh, to do a lot of what our technology set does today, plus a few more uh, goodies and at higher speeds. So we can cover a lot more ground, say maybe 10 uh, or 15 miles an hour. The CEO and founder of Nightscope Inc. The symbol is KSCP on the NASDAQ. It is having a really big day today. It's up 23% and the market is doing very well and it's a very exciting time for investors in kscp bill thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again long night scope short the criminals we'll see you on the other side have a nice day their website is nightscope.com